Have you ever thought about money and what it tells us about the country that prints it? Take this piece of Ukrainian currency, for example. This guy right here is Vladimir the Great of Kiev, who was the ruler of the Kievian Rus, so he must be an important figure in the history of Ukraine. Or take this euro, for example. Now, I understand that this isn't from one country, but rather the currency of the European Union, but if you look right here, you can see this artwork depicting classical architecture of Europe. U.S. currency is filled with all kinds of imagery uh, depicting the faces of figures that are important to U.S. history. So whenever you look at other pieces of currency from around the world, you get to learn a little bit more about that particular country. So whenever we look at the currency of the Confederacy, what does that tell us about the states who attempted to break away from the U.S. in 1861? That is what we are exploring on this episode of American Artifact. One of the questions we get very often in the museum is um, questions about Confederate money and, and just what is Confederate money? Well, Confederate money was a promissory note that was issued and it was not backed by silver or gold like most currency was at the time. And they, they came out in 1861 and there were several series of them. And um, this is an 1861 series and it has an image of a slave on it. And this one is actually stamped counterfeit. So there were some counterfeiting going on back then, just like today, and um, they, some of the counterfeiting was actually done by, the Confederate counterfeits were made by Union uh, printers to offset the Confederate economy. The most common one that you see is the series 1864. By 1864, the Confederacy had um, their, their economy was in shambles um, due to the war. And so you have the five, the 10, the 20, and the 50. And there's also a one, which we don't have out right now. Um, and then the 500. And there's a hundred as well that I just skipped, but the 100 1864 series is right here. So the 1864 series is readily available. Um, and, uh, you know, we sell them on our website, we sell them in our museum store. So if you want an authentic piece that's authenticated by us, you, you can certainly go on our website. Uh, here are two from the 1862 series. And, and um, these have really great artwork on. This one features a, a train. We call those train notes. And then this one has an image of slaves hoeing. And um, this seems to be one of the most popular ones. You know, it's such a, a southern image. And of course the 500 I think is, is the most um, graphically pleasing note, has the imagery of um, Stone, uh, Thomas Stonewall Jackson, General Jackson, and, and the Confederate flag right there. So this is just super fascinating to me, looking at all of the imagery on, on this Confederate money. So as Eric mentioned, like on, on this $100 note, uh, we, we have an image down here in the lower left hand corner of John C. Calhoun. That was the vice president of Andrew Jackson. He was an ardent supporter of uh, slavery and um, you know states' rights and, and things like that that you would associate with the Confederacy. And then with this note, he also mentioned you have this image of some of these enslaved people working out in the field. Uh, so this was the Confederacy kind of normalizing that way of life by printing it on their money. And then he also mentioned, you know, we have images of Stonewall Jackson. Here's one of Jefferson Davis, the only president of the Confederacy. And then this one in the lower right hand corner features Alexander Stevens, who was the vice president of the Confederacy. And I would encourage people to go and look up the cornerstone speech by Alexander Stevens because it, it really does speak to uh, 
I guess some of the, the values or the, the things that were held dear to the Confederacy. Uh, and then also take a look at this. This is just cool as heck to me. Uh, so this is one of the displays that they sell online at the Gettysburg Museum of History. Uh, so you can own a piece of history and then use it as a teaching tool for uh, you know younger kids or for other people and uh, gives you a thing that uh, or gives all of us something that, that we can help each other out in learning history. As I mentioned, Confederate notes are basically promissory notes backed by nothing more than a promise. One of the other um, forms that they take are, are these bond coupons, and they, they would be on a bigger sheet, and um, it would have imagery on there, and then these are um, um, coupons that they would cut off to um, get payment for interest. So some, some of the bonds are very high, $1,000, $500. Um, one of the other things that's um, stated on these notes, which is of interest that I forgot to mention, um, the promise was to be delivered two years, and it says right here, two years after the ratification of a peace treaty between the, the Confederate States and the United States. So basically they were saying after we win the war and we secede from the Union, after two years we will make good on this promise of, of uh, financial compensation. I wanted to point you to this one right here, and, and this is one of my favorite Confederate notes of all time. And it's just a common 1864 series Confederate note, and, um, but the history behind it is fascinating. When Jefferson Davis tried to escape um, Richmond, he uh, was taken prisoner, and he had taken a bunch of Confederate currency with him and some other things. But this note was actually captured on the person. It says, Confederate bill was found on the person of Jefferson Davis when he was taken prisoner at Georgia, May 10th, 1865, by Thomas H. Hatchett. And I've seen other similar notes like this. Apparently he had a, 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 a decent amount of Confederate script with him, and uh, some of the soldiers souvenired it out. Very fascinating piece. All right, well, that was uh, just a small sample of some of the currency that the Confederates had during the Civil War. Pretty fascinating to see all of that collected together and, and be able to examine it and actually have it in your hand and see the things uh, that the Confederacy held dear and some of the, the people that, uh, that they revered. Uh, teaches us a little bit more about history, a little bit more about human nature, and uh, a little bit more about the people who existed in the 1860s.